so speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Proverbs chapter 16, verse number 4, the Bible reads, The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked, for the day of evil. The Calvinists would love to spin this and change it and say it means something it does not. You know, notice it does not say God made them to do evil. Right? It doesn't say God made the wicked to do evil. It doesn't say that even that it made the wicked for hell. Like God specifically created the wicked people just to go to hell. You know, that's what the Calvinists would have you believe. But that is not what it says. He says he, he made all things, even the wicked, for the day of evil. And listen... Calvinism is a wicked, wicked religion. Calvinism is such a perversion of the simplicity of the gospel. It teaches that God doesn't allow you the liberty to choose whether or not you want to go to heaven. It's saying God doesn't give you any freedom. There's no liberty. You can't make the choice whether you're going to go to heaven or hell. You can't choose whether you're going to turn at a red light or not. It's, you, know, you have no choices whatsoever. God has taken all those choices away from you. Calvinism is a perversion of the gospel, and people that preach it, they have perverted the gospel. They preach a whole nother gospel. And they'll use this verse often. You know, they'll pull out Proverbs 16.4 as a way to try to defend Calvinism, or uh, uh, Exodus 14.4 is another one they'll often point, where it talks about where God said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. And it says that, that, that God would be honored among, uh, of Pharaoh. He says that the Egyptians may know that he is the Lord. They'll point to that, and they'll say, see, clearly God made Pharaoh just to go to hell, as if Pharaoh didn't have a choice to harden his heart. Because you clearly see the actions that the, the miracles happen and Pharaoh chooses to harden his own heart. So God says, okay, I'll harden your heart, Pharaoh. But Calvinists, they don't believe the Bible. Plain and simple. If you ever run into a Calvinist, you say, well, which Bible? Well, it says God has preserved his words. It says it's pure. Which Bible is pure? Which one is preserved? They can't give you an answer because all the ones that believe in Calvinism, ultimately, they use a Catholic Bible because their religion comes from Catholicism. They don't believe God can preserve His Word, they don't, so they don't believe His Word. They don't believe in the Bible. And, you know, the only way they think they can understand it is the same thing Catholics say. Well, you have to read some book. You've got to go to some concordance. You have to go to some priest or some great author, some church father, to be able to understand what the passage is talking about. And they ultimately do not believe God. They don't believe the Bible. They don't believe His promise of having a choice whether or not you want to go to heaven or hell. And it's, it's kind of strange doctrine that, you come, that comes out of their camp. But the way they use this verse, Proverbs 16, 4, is for, to prop up what is called limited atonement. Right? Atonement is dealing with the forgiveness of sins. And they're saying, well, it's limited whose sins or what sins were forgiven. God doesn't just simply forgive everybody's sins. Well, listen, the Bible is very clear that salvation is available to everyone. Salvation was, uh, was available to Hitler, it was available to Dahmer, uh, you know, it was available to Ellen DeGenerate, right? They've all rejected it. Right they have rejected salvation because of their own will, their own heart, their own choice. Limited atonement essentially teaches that Jesus did not die for the sins of the world. That Jesus only died for Calvinists. That's literally what li limited atonement means. And they ignore a whole bunch of scriptures, and they'll pinpoint a few of them to try to prop up. Uh, Titus chapter 2, he says, The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. A Calvinist would say, well, when it says all men, it doesn't mean all men. Salvation is not for all men. Grace is not for all men. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, he says, Who will have all men to be saved. Again, they would say, well, that's not all men. right? Calvinists don't believe the Bible. In that same chapter, in verse 6, it says, Who gave himself a ransom for all. Jesus laid his life down for everyone, for all sin. In 1 John 2, 2, he says that he had died for the sins of the whole world. So read that, Calvinist, or they just delete it out of their Bible. 2 Peter 3, he says, Not willing that any should perish. Again, debunking limited atonement, but they don't want to hear that. 2 Corinthians 5, he says, One died for all. Jesus Christ was the one that died for everyone. And those that reject the free gift, they don't have it. It's as simple as the free gift Bibles that we give out. I don't know if I have one in here. We give out the, the free gift Bibles. We gave over 150 of them away at the flea market. Free gift. 
We don't ask for your name, your number. We don't ask you to stop and talk to me. I don't ask for your address. I don't ask you to come to my church. Obviously, I would like you to do all those things. I don't, I, don't, I don't have to make sure you're a Christian to give you one of these. We gave these out indiscriminately, obviously as an opportunity to try to preach the gospel. But it says free gift. It means free gift. It was offered, and you know how many people walked? No. Some said, oh, I'm good. Others looked at it like the plague. Not interested. We're, no, you know. Well, guess what? They rejected the free gift. It was paid for. It was free to them, and they rejected it. That was their choice. Calvinists don't believe in choice. They believe in limited forgiveness of sins. What about John 3.16? John 3.16, the most famous verse in the world. Calvinists don't believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. They believe the gospel of John Calvin. It says, whosoever believeth, anybody that chooses to believe, they can be saved. You want to know how to kill a Calvinist? You're in Romans chapter 5. Look at this. I want you to see this. Look at verse number 6. Next time you have some Calvinist at the door you're, that's trying to debate you, look at this. Romans chapter 5, verse number 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. He died for the ungodly. I thought he only died for the Calvinists. I thought he only died for the elect, for those that, that God forced faith into their heart. Look at verse 8 in this chapter. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You understand that the lost sinners that will die and go to hell, he died for them. He paid the price for them. He's offered them the free gift. And if you reject it, you die. You remain as a sinner. Look at verse 18 in this chapter. Couldn't be any more clear. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men. He's saying Adam in the, in the garden sinned, and sin entered in the world, and death by sin. The whole chapter debunks it, but we just want to point out these, these three verses. Verse 18, he says, Judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, that's Jesus Christ, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Ask the Calvinists, well, what Bible do you have? What Bible do you believe God can preserve? Do you believe God is sovereign enough to preserve a Bible? Which one is it then? Which one isn't just good enough? Which one is perfect, as he has said? Because here in the King James Bible, it clearly says the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Salvation was given to all men. All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. But again, a Calvinist doesn't believe the Bible. They want to believe some structure of belief that some man that was a, that was a priest or followed a pope, they want, to, they want to follow them rather than follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Calvinists are so big in this phrase, exegesis. How many of you guys have heard this phrase? Yeah. Well, the proper, James White is the worst about that. He, he cannot answer a question in context. He's had, well, the exegesis. Oh, you silly Baptists, go to the exegesis. These King James only people, they just want to read what it says and believe it. You can't do that. You got to go back to the Pope. You got to go back to the Cordes. James White will end up in hell because he's rejected the free gift and he says, No, God forced it on me. The word exegesis literally means to lead out of. When I read something and I don't understand, James White would say, I need to lead out of the Bible and I need to go to a Catholic church father and see what he has written about the scriptures to be able to understand it. Now, that's not how the Bible works. The Bible is a dictionary. The Bible is perfect, and in context, you can understand what it's saying. So they don't believe in context. They believe in exegesis. Well, you need to exit the Bible, right? Exit, exegesis, Genesis, to lead out of. They're saying, well, to understand that, you've got to get out of the Bible. To understand the Bible, you need to read some book by some man that worships a pope that baptizes babies. It's wicked as hell. I hate Calvinism for a good reason. John Calvin himself was a pervert, and all of his followers have perverted the gospel. And listen, I do believe there are some Calvinists that are saved. People that either got saved as a child and they begin to adopt some of these doctrines because they don't understand. They're not studying to show themselves approved unto God, so they study what, what some guy told them, and they just believe that instead of testing the Scriptures and trying the spirits as they're commanded. But let's just look at this in context. Proverbs chapter 16, look at verse 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. 
Now, it's interesting, this phrase, the day of evil, it's only found in one other passage in the Bible. We're not going to go there tonight for the sake of time, but it's in Jeremiah 17, where, where it says, Jeremiah, he was a pastor, and it said that he, you know, he says, protect me from the day of evil, because the Israelites were trying to kill him. And he turns it around and says, God, why don't you put the day of evil on them? Why don't you give them a double destruction? Well, those are God's chosen people. Hey, not if they reject God. Right? If they don't reject God, they are not elected. They're not saved. They will end up in hell. And, and so that's the only other place that mentions the day of evil. Listen, evil means hurtful. This same word is interpreted in the book of Proverbs as hurtful, harm, uh, 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 mischief, right? Grievous. Those are things that hurt. So when it says evil, notice it doesn't say God created the wicked just to go to hell. It's not what it says. It says, the wicked that he created, because they've chosen to be wicked, oh, they will have judgment on their life. They, they will sow what they have reaped, that concept throughout the whole Bible. So Calvinists pervert this, and they don't, oh, we can't go into context. We can't read the whole chapter. We need the exogesis. We need to go ask Dr. Dr. White what he thinks about it. You know, Look at verse number 6 here. because He says, the wicked for the day of evil. Look at verse 6. He says, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, man depart from evil. You understand, we're commanded to refuse evil. That's a commandment in Isaiah chapter 7. Wait, refuse evil? Is that a choice? Yes, it says here that if you choose to fear the Lord, then you can depart from evil. So how do you avoid that day of evil coming on you? Well, you obey the Lord, and then you don't have judgment coming on you. He says, refuse the evil and choose the good, he says in Isaiah chapter 7. Calvinists don't believe in choice. Look at verse number 17 in this same chapter. He uses that same phrase of departing from evil. Proverbs 16, 17. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. Right? We've, you've heard of the highway to hell? Right? The highway of the saved, of the righteous person, is to stop hurting, to stop doing things that are mischievous, the things that are harmful to others. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He's talking about your way. How you walk as a Christian, it ought to be that you stop doing evil things. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. If you obey God, he will bless you. Joshua 24, choose you this day whom you will serve, right? Oh, well, the Calvinist doesn't have that in their Bible. They don't believe that. Of course they don't. They don't believe in choice. And it's kind of weird, and I would encourage any Calvinist to just go back to the Pope. That's where you came from. Just go back and bow down to the Pope. That's what's going to happen in the end times when the Antichrist is revealed. All the Calvinists will get on board, and they'll like them. They'll say, oh, he's bringing in the kingdom right now. So speak ye, and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty.